Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Audra and this is Living Crafty and Cozy. Welcome back to the channel and today I am getting started on decorating the front yard for Halloween and I wanted to do this really great DIY. There is a Halloween arch at Costco that inspired this uh, DIY that I'm doing here. I've been seeing it for a while now and I really love it. It is a Disney archway it's about nine foot tall and it's like pumpkin stacked on top of each other and then this really cute one at the top middle and i wanted to see if i could do anything like this even just get like a sort of a resemblance to it but just for much less <laughs> so at costco you can get it for right around right under 500 dollars. i've seen it on ebay for a thousand dollars uh, so the price varies, but it's it's pricey. It's really big. It's pricey, but it's so completely adorable So I wanted to see if I could just do this using some cheaper Dollar Tree items So I am just taking all of these baskets here um, I have bigger baskets for my bigger pumpkins and the smaller baskets here for the three smaller pumpkins that I'm trying to create and I am just taking some orange spray paint and painting them all orange. Next, I am taking pool noodles. I grabbed four black pool noodles and I'm cutting them in half. These are gonna be the pumpkin stems that wrap around the pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns rather. Um, these are the stems that wrap around the tops of the pumpkins. And I am just easily slicing through it with the knife there. And the black kind of eats up the paint. So like I said, you're definitely gonna wanna use at least, at least two, at least two, uh, depending on your paint. You know, if you got like a really thin paint or whatever, you might do three or four, but um, two, two work for me. And I think this is just apple barrel paint and like the nutmeg color. Okay, so now I am getting everything to the front porch here, the front yard, and I am going about assembling my pumpkins. I just, the smaller baskets do come with a handle, so I'm just taking those off first. And then I'm just putting the baskets on top of each other and using a little bit of hot glue. And that hot glue holds them together really well. Waving at one of the neighbors. <laughs> You know, they've got to think that we're crazy when we do all this stuff. Like, what in the world could she possibly be doing with all of these laundry baskets? Oh, people. But I usually get compliments afterwards, so I think they're used to it by now. <laughs> and so for this bottom basket or pumpkin, I am just throwing in a heavy, like, garden stone or something just to weight it down. I'm not using a stake because it's setting on top of our brick there. So I can't really like shove it through the ground or anything to kind of stake it down. So I just ended up using something really heavy. And then for this next jack-o'-lantern, I'm using zip ties to hold these two jack-o'-lanterns together. Um, you could use glue. 
I think I felt just a little bit more secure using the zip ties there. And I'm just feeding the one through the other. Um, and because there's holes in the bottoms and tops of these larger baskets. So I was able to feed that zip tie directly through and then just gluing the basket, the other two baskets together. And I do use zip ties on these baskets as well. Um, you can see I put it in the front here on this one. This is my first couple that I'm doing, so I'm just figuring it out as I go. I can't believe no one's actually duped this yet. This is the cutest little arch ever. It's so adorable, and I can't believe... I mean, if they have, I just haven't seen it yet. Okay, and so for this smaller basket, there's no holes in the bottom. So I'm having to feed the zip tie, like a larger zip tie. Um, I'm having to feed it through the bottom, like the, towards the bottom of the basket, um, like but like on the side, and then feed it through the side of my larger basket and then just cut those straps off. And I try and pull the zip ties towards the back so you're not seeing them as much. Uh, I do go ahead and cover the baskets all over with orange mesh. So you're not seeing the stuff as much, but still, you just want to kind of make it look as neat as possible because the mesh is rather see-through. And then I am just going over to the other side and repeating these steps. Assembling my three jack-o'-lanterns there using the hot glue and the zip ties. You can see me frequently wiping my face there. We live in Florida and it is hot, hot, hot. These actually held together really, really well. The, the jack-o'-lanterns there just by using the glue, the glue gun and the zip ties. And then I went to Hobby Lobby and found this really pretty orange tool. And I think I got like between eight and nine yards of the tool. And I just double layered it and draped it over the front of the baskets and kind of spreading it around as I go. And then I found these spools of sparkly orange mesh at Hobby Lobby as well. They're about $3 a roll and it comes 12 yards to a roll. So I am using that to just hold down that orange tool. And so I didn't even really have to attach the orange tool because I'm just swirling that, um, that sparkly mesh around it. And then I just tuck it in at the bottom there. I just tuck it into one of those holes and it holds everything down really nicely. I did run short just a little bit of that sparkly mesh but it, it wasn't too bad. It was like right at the very bottom where I ran out. So here's where I'm taking my pull noodle halves and just cutting them down to size and I'm wrapping it around the in between right where the first and the second pumpkins meet. So this, like I said, was supposed to be like the stem that swirls around the pumpkins and um, I easily pushed the zip tie right through the pool noodles. There was no issue there. I didn't even have to use scissors. And then I am just zip tying those pool noodles, uh, the pool noodle together. Super easy. This part actually went pretty quick and pretty easy. And I, I tell you, I was sweating the whole week thinking about how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? And I kept rehearsing the steps in my head, like I could do this or that but it actually ended up turning out pretty well. Once I put all the steps together, I was like, okay, not bad, not bad. But I just, I just had to get a plan together, that's for sure, because <laughs> there's a lot of different steps to it. And I'm just going around on the other side and uh, repeating the same steps using my mesh, my tool, and then the brown pull noodles to, to just get the structure of my arch all complete.
Yep, and that was the only one that it did that to. It actually pulled through the pool noodle. I was like, oh no, and make like a large slit through there and kind of busted, but just the one time it happened. So I just wanted to say, if you are having your, if you're doing this and you have your jack-o'-lanterns on grass, you could probably just use like a ready-made arch to attach all of this to. I didn't have anything like that. And, I, you know, I considered like, you know, putting a pole through it or whatever, but I literally would have nothing to secure the pole to or drive it through because it was sitting on top of the brick there. So um, I'm just taking a heavy gauge steel wire. I think it's like a 14 gauge. And I am just attaching one end to the, the first column there of jack-o'-lanterns. And I was lucky enough that there was a nail on the back end of that top beam. So I am just running the wire up and just hooking it onto that nail and kind of crimping it down. Um, and then I am feeding the wire over to the other set of jack-o'-lanterns and um, everything just held really well. If you're using wire like that, you're going to have to bend it really hard. It's kind of difficult, but, um, but this worked really well. And then there is that last pumpkin that I'm wrapping up. Unfortunately, I had run out of the sparkly mesh to go over the top of the tool. It really, you don't see it that much. There's not that much of a difference. And here I am just um, zip tying the pumpkin to the nail at first. Okay, so I've got it zip tied and secured to the nail. And then I'm taking a, another zip tie and I'm attaching it to the wire just to get it like really super secure to where it's not going all over the place. And then I'm taking my last two pull noodle halves and this is supposed to be, it's supposed to look like a stem coming out of the top and then kind of swirling around and supporting that top pumpkin. And I am just trying to figure out <laughs> How to make that happen. I'm like trying to work it again and again and um, so I finally ended up just getting some zip ties and zip tying that pool noodle onto the wire and I do end up attaching another small chunk of pool noodle that I had cut off previously to kind of get it to look where it's coming like more like from the middle of that jack-o'-lantern um, and not just coming from the back end. And I gotta tell you, this is the moment where the whole DIY started to come together for me. I don't know if you guys have ever had a project that you're working on or a DIY where the whole time you were just in question. You're like, no, this is weird. No, I don't care about that. No, no, no. And then you just add one tiny detail and you're like, oh wow it's all really coming together and a lot of times it happens when you're doing crafts that you have never seen anyone else do before too so you're just trying to figure it out on your own and it's like that one detail kind of makes the difference so adding this little um, leafy vine to the top really kind of did it for me and then when I added these two halves of the it's a Dollar Tree cobweb that they sell every year. When I added this, it just really started, continued to pull the whole project together. I was like, I'm actually starting to see it now. <laughs> it was a, an exciting moment for me. <laughs> Thank you.
and I also picked up black paper plates I got about three packs of them and I only ended up using about two and this is where I'm just cutting out the the face so this is supposed to be like Mickey Mouse um, and so it's got like the cute little black you know eyes nose and mouth and I did take a creative liberty of making the ears black as well the jack-o-lantern has uh, usually has like pumpkin ears like smaller pumpkin ears but I didn't really feel like that was going to stand out very well I wanted something that you could easily see from off the road so I did end up just using uh, black paper plates uh, the full circle black paper plates and using those for my ears and once I got the um, the one I cut out I'm just using it as a template for all of the other eyes. So, um, and this DIY, I have four of the large jack-o'-lanterns and then three of the small. So I tried to remember remember that when I was cutting out my my eyes, my nose, and my mouth that I would need to, you know, downscale it a little bit for the smaller ones. And here I am just cutting out the mouth and I've already assembled some of them here for the larger jack-o'-lanterns I did end up having to use two different plates for one mouth because it, it was that large so um, and to be honest with you what I really had a, wanted to use originally was black foam, like a foam paper, and then just cut the shapes out from that. But I was pressed for time, and the store that I went to did not have the black foam that I was looking for. I was so disappointed. So I, I was like, you know what, the black paper plates will be fine. Um, you know, I might have to end up replacing them with black foam later on, but that's just something to consider. My arch sits underneath our porch, so um, I was able to use paper plates as opposed to something that wouldn't just melt or deteriorate in the rain. This is my, I don't want to call it an exact dupe, but it's definitely inspired by the Disney Costco 
arch that's in stores right now. And total, what did I end up spending? I want to say I spent around, it was under 50. I came in at under 50. So, um, yeah. And then depending on what materials you already have, it might not even be that much for you guys. Um, I was really excited to be able to do this. The neighbors have already commented. They think it looks great. This was at first, my husband and I were like, uh, not so sure if I like it, not so sure if I like it, but it's really starting to grow on us. And the, the original is very beautiful, but you know, uh, do I want to spend personally? I'm not going to go out and spend $500 on Halloween decorations, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just where we're at right now. Um, but I'm sure, surely going to try to recreate it on my own. So I think I did okay, but you guys tell, tell me, did I nail the look or did I fail it? <laughs> was it a hit or was it a miss? Um, the, for me, the, the parts that make the look, like I said, were the, the cobwebs that I put around that smaller pumpkin on the top. And then for sure, the leaves, when I put the leaves on, I just thought it made everything pull together and look so cute. But let's get this out there. I would love to know if anyone else decides to recreate this look. Or what else What else would you guys use um, to make it look a little bit closer to the original? 